My name is Zalika Russell, happy to be here. Wendy is a good friend of mine, and I'm so happy to see everyone and hear such great stories about what everyone's doing. Um, I'm a project manager. Um, I moonlight with investing um, in properties and just looking to plug in and see what I can contribute to. So thank you for the invite, Wendy, and it's good to be amongst you guys. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Angela Harris. And um, I have a transitional home for women that are coming out of incarceration, homelessness, prisons. And because of my addiction for 28 years, I lost all of my kids to addiction. And growing up in a home where I was sexually molested for till I was 16 years old, I just have a heart to give back to women that are, that are experiencing these experiences. So I opened up my home Actually, I got my license for my nonprofit two years ago, but I opened up my home last year. And what drove me to open is I lost my oldest son to drug overdose. So when that happened, I was like, okay, God, I want to go back into these communities to help these moms that, um, that have experienced my experience. So I just want to just change everybody in the world. I wish I had the money to just open up men homes, women homes, children homes. I just wish that I can grow this community and just help everybody. So that is my passion. I'm asking God to help me to do this because if we don't go back and stop this recidivism, it's going to continue. It's going to continue. So yeah, thank you so much. That's right. And I believe Providence gathers souls where they need to be within a moment at a time. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, my name is Candace Harney. I am a newly uh, licensed realtor. Um, <laughs> Newly licensed, brand new, and Miss Wendy played such a big part in um, pushing me to that avenue. We met on a, again by Providence, on a trip to Dubai. We met at Orlando Airport. We spoke at the airport, and she's like, "Well, what are you going there for? I'm a real estate agent." I'm like, "Oh my God, I just took the real estate um, test." And she's like, "Oh, well, what are you doing out there?" And I was like, "I'm open to anything. I'm heading out there. I used to live out there, um, and I'll fill that in." And I'm like, I'm going out there for some networking for the events that's going on at the time. And she's like, you got to come to this event because this is not by happenstance. And as Providence would have it, we ended up attending the IPS the International Property Show out in Dubai and the annual investment meeting. And it was just amazing. And I was like, OK, this is it. Real estate. This is not by mistake. I've met this, this woman and that international real estate avenue. Um, it's down my alley because I lived out in the Middle East worked out there and traveled the world. So I've been to about 50 countries as life right. as Providence again would have it. Uh, from the Caribbean, um, my aunt right here is from the island of Dominica, that's my family from. I've lived there, Europe, Middle East and the, and the like, and have learned so much. And just hearing you talk about your project, um, the projects <laughs> that you mentioned. Um, uh, I've been part of a, a missionary family. My mom was a missionary moved here as an immigrant, moved back to the islands and devoted her life to the spiritual benefit, better, betterment and the building of community in her island nation. And so me and my brother were a part of that. And so we know about missionary work and traveling and serving. And in the light of all of this, I've had the opportunity to travel the world, but the most impactful travel for me has been to Africa. I've been to Lagos. Uh, when met multiple countries in West Africa, East Africa, and just being able to hear our stories and history and seeing for yourself what we lost and did not was did not inherit history wise. Look, I'm talking, I'm getting goosebumps. It um yeah, it it really impacted my life. And so now I'm trying to get on the avenue, okay, how do I tell the stories? How do I learn? And I've poured myself within the past, I would say, half a decade of learning and pouring and okay it's time to bring all that knowledge and all these encounters to the forefront and I'm I'm grateful for any of you that I'll be able to connect with to tell those stories to tell the history to tell the truth to people as heavy as that is 
And I believe on, only in that way can our people really come into their true identity of which they lost. It's a lot, it's layered. Um, and Bob Marley's message and watching the movie, I, I was looking at critics, you know, and some people were saying, oh, I thought it was boring or, oh, he didn't get the accent right. Or, and I'm like, I'm listening and I'm watching the story and I'm like, do you understand purpose? I'm watching a man and his wife navigate purpose on a screen. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna get shot for some music if you don't have a purpose, if you're not making an impact. A wife catches a bullet to the head, a husband grazes, that's purpose evident, purpose living. And to continue, that's powerful. So it, it, it spoke to my soul, that's what I'm about. How do we connect to purpose in whatever avenue we do? And if you're about that, then let's connect. <laughs> let's get people into purpose. So sorry for being long-winded. <laughs> name is Bernice Harney Lee. As my niece mentioned, we're from the Caribbean. I'm a retired clinical, a licensed clinical social worker out of New Jersey, the Irvington School District. I've been here for a couple of years now. And I am just beginning to realize what my actual purpose is in, in this life. Uh, retirement hadn't ended everything for me. I have begun a new life and I am dedicated to supporting my niece in whatever she does and wherever she goes. So it's a pleasure meeting all of you. Thank you for the invite and I pass the mic to you. But I have to press or anything? Just talk, okay. right into it. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, my name is Leonard. Arthur Kingsley and Brack the Third. Ooh, I, love it. I thought I might get that off. Uh, thank you for the invite. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I have a passion for peace, unity, and sports. I'm a lab technician, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. My name is JP. Thanks, Wendy, for the invite. Uh, I'm in construction, construction management. Uh, and that's how we kind of met. Uh, uh, I used to host a construction um, dinner once a month for people in the industry, and then COVID came. So um, that's what I do for a living. Ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that thing you've been working? Or is it just yes. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to pass something around, and thank you, Candace, for bringing it back to me. Um, this is a ring from uh, Nana Anim Obri, who is the um, descendant to the Ashanti Empire in Ghana. And he has extended an invitation to each and every one of you sitting at this table to come to his kingdom and learn about your history. And he is looking to put up a, um, a memorial to his ancestor, who is the one with the golden stool with the three legs. Go learn that story. Um, but uh, this literally fell off his hand in front of my steps when I was escorting him and the Queen Mother at the Florida International Trade and Culture Expo. And I said, can I try it on? He said, you can have it. I was like, <laughs> yes. So I'd like you to take a look at it and recognize that it is two alligators crisscrossed and it means unity and diversity. Thanks for, for setting all this up and, and thanks for inviting me. It, my name is Albert Robb. I plant seed, build bridges, and change lives. How I do that? I help run a construction company, and I'm a farmer, and also I work with my wife with our exchange student program. So we bring kids from all over the world to the U.S. for them to further their education. And then we also run our nonprofit um, JFC for you. So that's just it for me. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you were going to say more. <laughs> he said, a lot of people watch the movie and they don't understand. And they will never understand. Because if you don't have peace in your heart, you will never understand what love. We bring together, come together as one. We are one. No matter how you look at it, what color, what race, what creed, what size you are, we are one. Because if I cut you, you're going to bleed the same color that I bleed, which is the color red. Red is what God, Jesus, however you call him, he made a sacrifice to make sure we all are one. So thank you again so much for putting this together. 
And for me, I am the fabulous Camille Robb. That's my name, my grandmother gave it to me. A lot of people don't understand, but the word fabulous mean me. You look at me, you smile. You look at me, you see peace. But I'm best known as the fabulous global mom. Why? Because I provide education, food, clothes, and shelter for children, not just locally, but around the world. Why do I do that? Because I was one of those children that was trying to figure out where my food was coming from, and I had two younger brothers that I had to feed. When I came into this country, I realized something. As powerful as the United States is, there's children right next door that don't know where the next meal is coming from, and we need to stop it. And in order for we need to stop it, it starts with me. I can't feed everyone, but everyone can feed someone, and we have to start some way. So when I look in the mirror, I see me, so I have to start with me. What about you? What are you doing to make an impact? My husband say he, he plants seed. We don't only plant seed in the ground, but we plant seed in the life of others so they can go out and make a difference. We have to impact the world and change the way how we see people. You are my sister, you're my brother, and we are keepers. I am my brother and sister keeper. If you understand what that word mean, each one teach one. So what you learn, you teach me so I can teach the next person. And as long as we keep teaching each other, we will have enough knowledge to be powerful and stay powerful. So if you want to know what my husband and I have been doing, we've been doing this for 27 years, and we don't wait for anybody to donate, no. We work, he has his own company, I have my own company. The money I make from my company, I take it and I use it to educate children. I use it to feed children. Why? Because if I don't, who will? Now to follow that. <laughs> yes, and I'm glad you asked that question, what are we doing? I'm Venice White and I'm a friend of Wendy's. We have run over 17 or more half marathons together. Uh, we became friends through Black Girls Run. Um, and, and, tw and 15 of those half marathons were in the same year, so we bad, we bad. Um, my full-time job, what am I doing? I work for the Florida Department of Health in Seminole County where I started, but now I'm the state health equity training administrator where I provide cultural competency and diversity training. Growing up in Washington, D.C., I didn't need a class. I didn't need a declaration that racism is an issue. I did not need the title DEI to know that there are disparities in health. What I do in my trainings, and I also have a consulting business, the Public Health Clinic, a play on health because we don't have health care, we have sick care here in the United States. I can tell you the zip code where you live, where you live, work, play, who you hang out with, what you order will dictate how old you will be when you die. We're set up to have those disparities. We're set up to have those inequities. So with the work that I do, I teach the cultural competency. And it's going back to that. We wouldn't need a DEI CEO if we treated everybody as the same. We would not need that. I can drive down where I grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland, and see liquor store, fast food, fast food. That's the a, that's a inequity in the policy. Someone pass a policy to have that housing situation, to have um, what we call environmental racism. That was a policy passed. So I also serve on different boards and I, and I did take notes on a napkin, um, <laughs> Miami friend. And, and, and I serve on several boards. One is gang alternatives, which is in Miami. So I'll be reaching out for you there. I am a grant writer. I hate sharing that because people call me all day asking if I could write them a grant to pay for their mortgage. If I knew that grant, I would have paid off my house, okay? <laughs> so if you know that grant, I can write it and we can pay off all our properties. But also I'm with the um, Metro Plan Orlando Transportation because again, it's not just housing, it's not just education, it's all of that, bright line, that, that can be an inequity. If I have job opportunities and I need to get around, if I don't have a car and Sunrail runs, did, did anybody ride the Sunrail today? No, because it doesn't run on weekends, does it? Okay. It's for the commuter person. Sometimes we have policies and things in place that intentionally create 
those disparities. So the work that I do through my consulting business, through my government job, um, and all of the affiliations like Black Girls Run, and I always have to explain, Black Girls Run is a need for me because I'm a black girl. It doesn't mean that white women can't run or men can't run, but this black girl needed support, and that support was through that organization where I met Wendy, so thank you. We were out late, and I woke up early to catch that bright line to be here with y'all, uh, but uh, <laughs> I am a social impact entrepreneur. I'm an angel investor. I'm a philanthropist. I'm a community, uh, a, a community builder, and I'm a speaker. So in fact, I'm being flown out to London to speak at the House of Lords around what we're doing on global diversity. So we're talking about being global. Um, that's one of the things, diversity obviously being key uh, to the work that we're trying to do and elevate the stories of black women. So along those lines, I have a YouTube channel that uh, Wendy has been featured on. I'm a black woman, Yes I Matter, and it's about featuring the stories of, of all of us across the African diaspora. So if you have a business you would like to be featured, let me know. Or if you just have a story that you want to tell, please let me know. I would love to, to have you on. Uh, my mom and I, uh, we, we, my family owns a building in Hollywood, Florida, which is between Fort Lauderdale and Miami. So we opened up a co-working space. So we had our grand opening on my birthday, February 9th, so a week ago. <laughs> so there's a lot of things going on. And then um, we are also launching what we're calling our Family and Friends Fund. As we know, uh, our VC and investment dollars, only 1% go to folks who look like us here in the community. And also, oftentimes, we cannot go to our family and friends and ask for $100,000 just off a whim because we wrote an idea on a napkin. Um, that is somebody's story who's now a multimillionaire. Anywho. Um, so we decided we were going to be your family and friends, and so we are building out that fund, um, and we'll be giving out twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars to uh, ten organizations: five for-profit, five non-profit, who are led by Black, Brown, and/or impact Black and Brown communities. So those are all the things that I have going on. Just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> And I'm, of course, just happy to be here and working with Wendy. So, Wendy, thank you so much for um, bringing me into your community and uh, connecting me here. So, I appreciate it. Thank you. My name is Ogla Gatama. I am blessed to live my life in two different continents 24 hours a day. I am a proud um, daughter of Mother Africa, born and raised in Kenya. And um, my, my purpose in life is to empower and inspire a world full of generosity and compassion. So what I professionally, I own a real estate company, I have about 170 something realtors. Uh, since I bought the franchise, we've served over 4,500 predominantly black and brown families to own or invest in real estate. I'm really, really proud of my team of world changers. Uh, my agents come from 30 different countries. We speak more than 20 languages and I have been blessed by God to um, influence them to be world changers. So we have charity and mission projects all over the world, especially in each country of where our agents uh, come from. My part-time <laughs> volunteer roles, I have too many of them <laughs> to mention, but I purposefully stay in spaces and work with the most generous human beings in the world. So we've done so many projects, um, especially in Africa. We've drilled wells, built schools, built churches, hospitals. Uh, our passion project right now is um, supporting my cousin and her husband build the first pediatric cancer hospital in Kenya. Um, because statistics Statistically, if 10 children are diagnosed with cancer in the United States, nine of them will have an opportunity to have an extension of life. If 10 children are diagnosed with cancer in Africa, one of them might live. And we want to change that statistic. So yeah, we, um, we are a very proud community of um, go-givers. Have you read the book of go-givers? And I spend time consulting people that do mission work anywhere in the world to understand the international space. But the most important thing is we do a lot of work in the United States. I have been, I've worked in hospitality for 10 years. I've worked in retail. I work for the Gaylord Hotels, a director. I work for 
um, Target stores and now with Keller Williams and I've always been involved in two volunteer roles in any of my companies, the DEI space and the community giving space. And so I'm really proud of a lot of the work that my past company and my present company is doing to do that. I have a nonprofit, Oglas Hope Foundation. Uh, we do many, many projects in Kenya, but I also love to do mission safaris where I take people from the United States to my home country, Kenya. We do some mission work, we do safaris. Uh, they get to um, interact with um, the, the culture and it's such a deeper level um, safari, mission safari than just going to Africa and looking at animals because Africa is way oh, more than animals. <laughs> Let them know. And you've not had the experience um, to be able to go to the motherland. I would love to inspire you, especially people of color, because you will always have a hole in your heart and your spirit if you don't go to the motherland of Africa and get connected to the soil.